This is Twit. And it is time to welcome back Dan Morin from Six Colors, this time to talk about the iPhone 14. Thank you for joining us for two segments here, Dan. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, nothing more than I like talking about Apple events. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's talk about the iPhone 14 lineup because uh, there were some, not, not surprises if you've read any of the rumors, but changes from last year. Can you talk about uh, what the lineup looks like this year in, compas- in comparison yeah. to last year? Sure. Well, the big uh, omission this year is obviously there is no new mini size phone. Apple has instead chosen to uh, do an iPhone 14, which is basically the same size as the iPhone 13, and then do an iPhone 14 Plus, which is a larger size that's closer to the uh, iPhone 14 Pro Max uh, with a larger, I believe it's a 6.7 inch screen. Um, so, you know, they've decided obviously people seem to prefer the bigger phones to the smaller phones. Uh, so that's the big uh, dis- distinction there. And then, of course, we have the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which follow along with the, the 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max. So uh, con- continuing that sort of bifurcated lineup, uh, but getting rid of the smaller size in favor of another larger phone. Yep, it's uh, it-, it was interesting to see that. I know some people were certainly disappointed uh, at the loss of the Mini, but it seems like uh, that is the way of things. Um Now, we've got, of course, as Apple always has or has for quite some time, uh, sort of differentiated between a standard and a pro model. So let's start with the standard model um, with the notch, or as I have decided to call it uh, based on Jason Snell's own naming, uh, the static peninsula. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, I think that's hilarious. Uh, Tell us about the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Plus. Uh, What can folks expect that makes it new given that it's using a chip from the previous gen iphone yeah so a couple of things here as you point out yeah it's using the same a15 bionic chip that we saw last year's iphone 13 line uh the slight distinction they've basically used a a slightly better version of the chip here it's an a15 bionic with five cores in its gpu which is up from four cores uh Probably not going to make a huge difference for most people if you're looking to eke some extra performance out of it, but a little bit helps. Uh, The main other improvements here, uh, you know, we obviously have the camera system, which gets a little bit of a bump. Um, This is using the advanced dual camera system, um, although it's the same 12 megapixel uh, that we saw in last year's iPhone 13. Um, And then it's got a front camera also adds autofocus, which is another one of the big features they sort of pulled out this year in terms of the camera system. Um, And then, you know, uh, they've also got this thing they've calling and I'm going to have to like look deeper into this because I could not tell you based on like the name what this means. This is the photonic engine that Apple (laughs) has been talking about with its new I mean, great. Great branding, if nothing else. But uh, if you ask me to explain in a breath what exactly that means, I think I would struggle a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, not it's even an Apple could with, explain with it light. In a breath. <laughs> yeah, it exactly. makes your camera better, everybody. That's all you need to know. So I think that's the main thing you want to take away from that. Um, and then we also add this action mode, which is a improved sort of stabilization mode where you can shoot stuff without a lot of the judder that you might see otherwise if you're like a fast moving scene. Um, so that'll be, a, uh, you know, something that people with uh, taking a lot of, of movies will like to see. Uh, and then one of the other big features that we talked about sort of across the iPhone line is this new uh, emergency SOS uh, with satellite feature, right? This is the satellite emergency feature that we had heard some rumors about, uh, which comes to the entire iPhone 14 line and essentially lets uh, you have limited connection with a satellite in cases where you might be lost or trapped or someplace where you do not have a cell signal. So that is probably one of the big features that Apple rolled out across the iPhone line uh, this year. And um, it's an interesting one. I think it's kind of, it's tricky to market a phone based on a feature that you hope nobody ever needs, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, you you don't want to have to have people use it, but uh, if, if they do need to use it, then it is available. Um, and it will be available uh, to use in the U.S. and Canada in November, um, and it's free for two years. Uh, yeah. As we don't, yeah, we don't really know what that means, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What will it cost after that? But um, why would I thought this was a common question, and I, you know, I'm curious uh, your take on this. 
why does this co- why will this eventually cost money? Can you explain sure. kind of what's involved in this? Yeah. So, I mean, basically, Apple has designed a system whereby these phones incorporate an antenna that can communicate with satellite. Obviously, that's not something most phones can do. You've probably seen satellite phones in movies and the like, which are these very clunky things with a big antenna that folds out. Um, You need to have satellites to talk to. And that's an expensive proposition. We have uh, private companies that launch satellites into orbit. Um, And we've seen some increasing partnerships between satellite companies and uh, cell phone providers. I think just last week, uh, T-Mobile and Starlink uh, announced a partnership where they'd be able, T-Mobile customers would be able to use Starlink satellites for certain limited features. Um, It's expensive to keep satellites in orbit and expensive to launch new satellites. So one suspects that whatever company they've made a deal with, and I don't believe they have publicly stated what that is, uh, you know, needs to get some some subsidies, some ongoing costs. So I believe there's a similar service available from Garmin that costs in the range of 15 bucks a month, I believe. Mm-hmm. I am a little skeptical that Apple will try that. I think the two-year period might extend or we might see something announced later where, you know, Apple has basically subsidized this because I think they don't want to be in a position where it's like, well... That person could have been saved if only they'd paid $15 a month to Apple. <laughs> but sadly, they did not, and they were lost. It was like, well, that seems like really bad PR. So we'll, we'll yeah. see how that develops over the course of the next couple of years. Yeah, I'm, I'm eager to learn a little bit about that as well. Um, all right, we should definitely move on then to talk more about the uh, Pro line, which is features some very interesting changes that I think people weren't necessarily expecting to uh, happen the way that they did. I will say, I uh, shared a little tidbit about this this morning on a podcast I record with Dan Moran called Clockwise. Um, and it was that while we were there watching the event, because for folks who don't know, I was invited to attend the event. And um, when they announced the Dynamic Island, which uh, Dan will tell us about in a moment, uh, there was a chuckle that went through the room. So the name still taking some time to settle in, but... It was quickly followed by, ooh, ah, as people started to see what in the world the Dynamic Island was and what it was going to provide. So uh, tell us about the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. Yeah, so a few features. Let's get this out of the way before we talk about the Dynamic Island, which I think is the most interesting part. We've got an updated screen with a better promotion technology that does the adaptive refresh rates, which means now there's an always-on display because they can throttle down to uh, one refresh per second, basically, rather than the uh, the previous one. I think only went down to 10. Um, so that allows the same sort of always-on display that we've seen on recent versions of the Apple Watch. Uh, there's a better chip in there. We've got the A16 Bionic, which will be this sort of flagship chip for the year, I imagine. And then we've got an upgraded camera system that has a 48 megapixel uh, camera, which now allows things like I think there's now a 2x um, the, the zoom they sort of get along, get away with by doing a cropping of the standard image. Um, so all of those things are kind of the standard things you expect. Uh, better display, it's brighter, uh, you know, better chip, better camera, um, and that's all to the good. And then of course the the big thing that we have, as we mentioned, is the dynamic island (laughs) what is the dynamic island well uh we've all gotten accustomed to the um the notch that we've seen in recent models of the iphone which is where the little camera sensors are at the top of the screen Uh, this year there was a big rumor that this would be replaced by a capsule or pill or lozenge shape uh, which is exactly what we got here now what's fascinating about it is that one of the sensors is actually embedded in the screen so even though you see this sort of oblong shape it's actually more like a circle and like a smaller oblong shape but they're using the screen to sort of make it look like it's actually just one unbroken uh, line and then they're leaning into it further with this idea of the dynamic island which is saying hey what if we not just like uh, pretend that space doesn't exist and feel like we're really embarrassed by it and instead bring it to the forefront and use it as a ground for things like notifications. So they showed off a number of really interesting animations and styles where essentially this can be used to display information uh, at all periods of time, like they showed off like sports scores hanging out up there. Like if you want to follow those in live time in live, you know, sort of real time as you're watching a game or following a game, it can be 
relegated to this little strip at the top without interfering with the rest of your interface. Uh, other things like when calls come in, you get a notification or when you switch away from the music app, it can still keep like the album art in this little icon up there. Uh, basically using all this space that was otherwise going kind of unused, right? Like, you know, the notch had to be sort of planned around uh, in the uh, earlier versions of the iPhone. But here we're really saying, hey, let's take advantage of this space uh, that is otherwise just going to be wasted and really use it to the, the utmost as we can. So it'll be interesting to see how this evolves and whether it comes to future iPhones. My bet is yes, you don't spend this much time developing a feature like this to use it on one phone and then move on. Yeah, I I agree. I think uh, this this cool operating system stuff is is a long time uh going to continue a long time uh just quickly before we let you go um anything else about the iphone 14 lineup and uh should folks if they're wanting to get it on day one when uh, should they look to sure. uh, pre-order this device yeah, the other thing I'll mention, of course, is colors. There's been a lot of consternation about colors in previous years. I think, unfortunately, the iPhone 14 line uh, suffered from a bit of a desaturation this year. So you've got like blue and purple <laughs> options that are very pale in the main iPhone 14 alongside Apple's new ubiquitous midnight and starlight sort of tinted options. There is a bold red version, product red, still available. So if you're looking for a big, bright color, that's where to go. And then on the pro line, you've got the sort of metallic options, the silver, the gold, the graphite, space black. That's one of the space Space black this year, which I hear is quite quite black, which is nice, as well as the uh, deep purple, which is the one that I'll probably be ordering. Uh, and if you want one, you're going to have to probably jump on it pretty quick uh, tomorrow, Friday, uh, the September 9th. A pre-order start at 5 a.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. Eastern. So if you're looking for one, you're going to have to get in there quick because they tend to go fast. Indeed. Indeed they do. Well, Dan Morin, thank you so much for your time. Uh, if folks want to follow you online and check out all the great work you're doing, where should they go to do so? You can follow me over at sixcolors.com, where we'll have a lot more about all of Apple's latest announcements, as well as over on the Clockwise podcast on Relay FM with Micah. That is a great place to go. Thank you, Dan. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks for having me.